in silence until today. Join me, a European filmmaker coming to Los Angeles on the quest for America's forgotten silent film pioneers. Here in Hollywood, since the days of silent film, cameras have captured images, then projected them larger than life. Actors' faces became familiar and their names well known. Through the generations, many fine actors are still remembered and their images preserved. Many are, but not all. Some of the best actors are still missing from our pantheon. Some silent film stars who had brilliant careers and who deserve to be commemorated aren't. Here in Los Angeles, there are a few people who are trying to change that, and we're going to meet them. I begin my journey here at the heart of Hollywood Boulevard where 2,500 names are embedded in the Walk of Fame, honoring actors who thrilled their fans and influenced the art of film. Among them, luminaries of silent film like Mary Pickford, Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, Douglas Fairbanks. But some others from the silent era did not get their due. Nestled along the Walk of Fame is the TCL Chinese Theater, home to many prestigious premieres and even some Oscar ceremonies. Within its spectacular interior, we meet with Alex Stykov, founder and the president of Silent Hall of Fame, a non-profit organization which has been an ambassador of those overlooked silent film stars. What inspired Mr. Stykov to create Silent Hall of Fame and what is its primary focus? I discovered one particular silent star. Her name is Marceline Day. She supported Buster Keaton in the great romantic comedy, The Cameraman. I took a very keen interest career in the 1920s and after that I was shocked to find out that she does not have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Further on I found out that there are other silent movie personalities which have made a very big contribution to the industry and the country and which have not been properly rewarded for their contributions. So the primary mission of Silent Hall of Fame is to uh, bring into the public discourse the names and the legacy of these overlooked uh, silent pioneers, including in the future uh, placing their stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Silent Hall of Fame lists and promotes the names and legacies of 21 silent era stars who contributed to the motion picture industry from both sides of the camera, including actors, actresses, film directors and camera operators. All the stars of Silent Hall of Fame are overlooked nowadays, uh, even though they have had illustrious careers in the 1920s. And the reason for this is that they were not awarded with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for one reason or another. It doesn't mean at all that they are worse than the stars that are already on the Walk of Fame. Out of all silent uh, uh, feature films, 
70% are forever lost, only 30% survive. But out of those 30%, only a small part are available. And this became our second mission, to bring these films out of archives. It is very important to make an effort with the support of the public to bring these films out into the open and to show them to everybody who wants to see these films. The star-worthy artists, identified by Silent Hall of Fame, all had passion for their work. But the commitment of the stuntmen is especially striking. They truly risked their lives to get the shot. Award-winning stunt specialist Gary Kent evaluates their work. They were the, the start of, of making magic happen on the big screen. Helen Holmes is getting ready to drop onto a speeding train. No airbags here, she's just doing a transfer to the top of a speeding train. And again, she landed perfectly. If she rolled off that train, you can see it was moving. If she rolled off that train, it would have been a bad scene. But she didn't. And she went on to become a, a famous movie stuntwoman. This is Helen Gibson, one of the first silent film stars, one of the first movie stunt women. Here she's doing what we call a ride and rescue or transfer from one moving uh, object to another at speed. The audience clamored for action, just like they do today. And so they provided the action and they, they got the skills they needed to do that by what they did off camera the rehearsing and all the work that goes into making the stunt work. Nell Shipman was from Canada and she was an expert with animals. She, uh, she sort of set the standard for working with animals. So we didn't have any real animal wranglers. The stunt woman had to know what she was doing and she did. Uh, this is Jack Hoxie we're seeing now and he was sort of discovered by Hoot Gibson and the boys. He worked as an extra on a film, and he was so handy and so agile, they talked him into becoming a stuntman. You can see now he's going to do this high wire walk, and if he fell, there's nothing down here to catch him. That's just pure guts that, and agility. Oh, of course it is important to honor them, and the Silent Hall of Fame is doing that. Those people were the ones that figured out how to do it. And we should appreciate that. And we're getting a chance to do it now, hopefully. Perhaps the Hollywood Walk of Fame will someday add more names of the earliest achievers in the industry. The contributions of those silent film artists are being revealed by the restoration and release of old footage. More information about the silent film era can be found at the Hollywood Heritage Museum, which is located just off Hollywood Boulevard. Dawson George Kyle explained that this converted Lasky de Mille barn was the site where Hollywood's first feature length film was shot and the offices where Paramount Pictures began. Russian people that created the film capital of the world. The City Fathers renamed Prospect Avenue Hollywood Boulevard, which of course we know becomes the main street of the silent movie era and eventually the main street really of the entire entertainment industry. An old movie camera, a camera graph projector, a mutoscope. Equipment like this ushered in the silent film era. But what was it about the American audience that allowed Hollywood to boom? And how did immigrants contribute? They contributed one nickel at a time. Beginning in the 1860s and really right up until the First World War, the immigrants came not by the hundreds, not by the thousands, but by the tens of millions. The immigrants didn't speak English, they couldn't have understood this at all. But the movies are only a nickel, five cents, 
Uh, therefore, the term Nickelodeon, which was the term for the early movie theaters. You put five cents into a box and you go to the movies. Such an important thing, the movies are silent. It's pantomime and it's silent, which means it speaks the universal language. What began with nickels has become a billion-dollar industry. Further down the boulevard, there's Hollywood's oldest restaurant, built in 1919. It's the Musso and Frank Grill, a favorite of actors and directors since the start. What a great place to meet documentary filmmaker Hugh Monroe Neely. He has first-hand experience accessing both European and American archives and understands the challenges of restoration. I think the Silent Hall of Fame will bring back a large number of actors who deserve a recognition that over the years has been lost, in many cases because their images were lost to us and we weren't able to see them for a long time. What they did has a truth to it and these are real actors. If you look at them, if you understand this art of sort of pantomime that the silent film created, it's almost more of an art than what we have today. So screenings are an important part of that. Getting the word out is an important part of that. Putting things out on the internet is an important part of that. It all serves to let people know what we have available. The important thing is that they be presented, then they be presented well. You know, if all you see is a dirty old beat up copy that wasn't very good, it wasn't well preserved or wasn't well restored, what are you going to make of it? You'll lose the magic that's inside there. The film archives create the best copies possible. And when you put together the films that are stored in the film archives, with the presentations, both in the archives themselves and through a place like the Silent Hall of Fame, you'll be able to see them for the first time. And you'll understand what makes them special. Understand what makes them special. Let's take a look. Through its website, Silent Hall of Fame provides information about some unheralded individuals who are particularly deserving of recognition. Photos and biographies are presented, as well as contemporary reviews of their work. In many cases, their movies are also available for viewing. The website exposes these materials to a wide audience, including media-savvy young people. I do believe that if uh, the current generation of young people takes some interest in silent films, they'll, they will be delighted to see the quality, the artistic quality of these films, and they will like them very much. Okay, let's see how young people react to silent films. Do they see any value in them? And are they emotionally moved by them? Um, it really engages you. And I feel like it gave me a chance to take part in the creativity of it. Whereas today, you're just, you're given what you get is what you get. What you see is what you get. It's a very important part of history and it's like a little time capsule. And um, it's not just how people actually were, but how people choo chose to express themselves at the time. And I think that's one reason why it's really important. There's a, there's an amazing treasure in and how about the silent films that are awaiting in archives and have not been exposed to the public? Then maybe we could put more funding into pulling movies out like that, because if you look into the past, like, you learn so much. Those films also disintegrate in their cans, too, if they're not properly preserved. So you open up a, a film canister and it'll look like mush. It's hugely tragic that we lose these because what if we did lose? What if we lose? What, what if we did lose another Casablanca, another Star Wars, another just work of art that's been lost? That's been lost to time essentially. There could be a like you know a Picasso 
basically in there, you know what I mean? But like of, of the film world, then it's just funny like to think that we've just let it sit there and age. The purpose of preservation of silent films is not to keep them in archives. It is to show them to the public that is interested and that would cherish to see these films including many descendants of these silent stars which are very eager to see these films and which have supported the efforts of Silent Hall of Fame to bring out these films from archives around the world. Joining the conversation are Nina and Scott Roberts, the grandchildren of Big Joe Roberts. They want to talk about his legacy. The legacy is so important to us, and we're very honored about the legacy that he has left us. He had so many great films that he co-starred in with Buster Keaton. As people become more and more knowledgeable with all the stars, and when they make a trek to Hollywood, they want to be able to see that in person, uh, make a connection. If they don't see it, they're not going to have the connection. Uh, and it'll just fade away. So with that, definitely they, they would have the connection and, and you know, put them back in to the spotlight. Around the world. He is being honored today with the 2,540th star on the Is Hollywood this the awards Day. ceremony for Big Joe Roberts? No, not yet. But for him and for all the distinguished artists featured by Silent Hall of Fame, their day should come. The engraved star represents a tiny patch of immortality, an object for fans to find, a memory that will not fade away. Although Hollywood Boulevard might currently underrepresent silent film artists, the Los Angeles landscape is full of monuments to the era's impact, just like this old building, which was Charlie Chaplin's soundstage. Along with California State University professor Didia Delizer in her 1924 Nash, we're off for a short tour of the silent movie era landmarks. If you look at Los Angeles, so much of the city was built in the 1920s. Acting without speaking, essentially, and conveying all the emotion without, without words, um, I think it's something that we've forgotten, especially at a time when we're now embedded in our phones and stuff like that. So I think it's beautiful to see so much convey conveyed without speaking. It's interesting to see movies from a time when the the now standard forms were not yet they were not yet fully developed, right? They were changing, they were developing as you watch. It's a lot harder to build a richer history from those lesser known sources. So anytime that you can preserve the so-called lesser known sources, then you're doing a great service to the future. The spirit of the silent film era and its pioneers is still among us. Although nearly 100 years have passed, with technological advances bringing color and sound to the image, we, we love, we laugh, we smile. Just like them, we want to thrive, celebrate our lives, share our talents with others, and we want to be remembered for our accomplishments. These are silent film artists, filmmakers, who committed themselves, their youth, their talent, and often their lives, to create unforgettable images and characters. They are the true pioneers of the movie industry, the overlooked stars of Silent Hall of Fame. Today, these stars await our voices, here and now, so that the silence is finally broken and their legacy is brought back into light.
and their names are properly honored to never be forgotten again. Here on Hollywood Walk of Fame, I'm honored to get a call from Mr. John Klein, the nephew of the overlooked silent film star, Marceline Day. I've walked that street many, many times and looked at all the great names of actors and directors and producers and uh, technologists. I think it's a, a wonderful, wonderful recognition of the people who, who really, you know, especially in the, with silent films that sort of gave birth to, to an industry. I think that um, my aunt's performances are kind of universal, not mm -hmm. only from an acting standpoint, but just um, the delight of seeing a level of communication using facial expressions and certainly her eyes. Uh, it would just be uh, so wonder wonderful and so fitting. Uh, and I would just love to be there for that unveiling of my aunt star. We will complete our mission and make history thanks to support of viewers like you. Please visit silenthalloffame.org and sponsor your favorite silent star with your tax-deductible contribution.